Shalom Israel. I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to the Most High Yahweh and to His mighty Son Yahweh Bahashem Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. This is Sister Rachel, and today we're going to be discussing "For God So Loved the World," and let's find out what that really means. Y'all niggas, and you gonna be niggas forever, just like us, niggas. You're not niggas. In the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In this script, everyone knows it. It's quite famous among people in Christianity. The Most High is talking about loving Israel in particular, but we'll get into that. But as long as you believe on his son, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. But first, let me get the book of John chapter 3, verse 1, to see who Hamashiach is talking to. The book of John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Here we see that Christ was talking to the king of the Jews, Nicodemus. He wasn't talking to any one of the other nations. And you'll see in the book of Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17, who he's talking to when he says the world. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. In the, in the word, when the word world is used, there are many different worlds. Each nation is its own world. If he was talking about the entire earth or entire human population, he would say earth. But he wasn't talking about everybody. He was talking about his people. And let's get that in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Again, the whosoever in John 3.16 is referring to Israel, not anyone else. And then also, I have a precept. If we go to the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 9, And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. In the, wild, in the first wilderness, when the Jews were there after they, the Most High had released them from captivity in Egypt, they were murmurings going against Moses yeah. and Aaron. So the Most High sent snakes after them to bite them, and people were dying. So they asked Moses for help, and the Most High said, if you had been bitten, if you looked upon the serpent, you would be healed. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And if any, and the Most High said, if you had been bitten, if you looked upon the serpent, you would be healed. So you had to, you had to believe 
that this serpent would heal you. You couldn't just look at it. You had to believe on the Most High. And again, you see the people being saved in this instant are Israelites. That in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 32, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. The only people getting saved are the Israelites. Zion, Mount Zion, the people who were saved from the, the snakes in the wilderness, the people who are going to be taken to the second wilderness. No one else. When Christ said, for God so loved the world, he meant his chosen one. And let me get that in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. The world he's talking about is Israel. And we're not going to end. We're going to be the one saved, the one third saved when Christ comes the second time to put the ultimate judgment on the entire world or the entire earth, I mean. And let's get that in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ only came to save Israel, Israelites, both northern and southern kingdom. No one else. Every account you'll see when he's helping people, they're Israelites, whether they be Gentiles and they are not aware of their true heritage or they, they know exactly who they are. In conclusion, to all the real Israelites out there, you must repent, believeth on the Most High, believeth on Yahweh Bahashem Hamashiach Yahweh his only begotten son, follow all the law, statute, and commandments and have faith. And with that, shalom.